While the current trend for running an AI company is to release a banger open weights model, raise a few millions, and then disappear behind a paywall, Meta and XAI have continued to bless us with their top tier open source models. With XAI, open sourcing Grok 1 completely out the whim by Elon and teased us with Grok 1.5 Vision shortly after, Meta also dropped the long anticipated Llama 3 a week later. With jaw dropping metrics that even OpenAI went completely silent on the day of Llama 3's announcement, which is a first for for OpenAI. And the highlight for Llama 3 is actually not about their model architecture, but how they have trained it, which surprised people the most. So this time, the new Llama 3 series mainly contained two different model sizes, with 8B and 70B being open sourced. But on top of these two, there is a third model size with a staggering 400 billion parameters that is still in the making. While they did not publish the 400B model, we still got to see its performance. And not only that, they even fine-tuned an instruct version, so there are are actually two models that were evaluated, both on slightly different benchmarks. Comparing the benchmark for the pre-trained model, while 5-shot MMLU and the 25-shot ARC challenge is still lacking slightly behind, the 3-shot drop, however, did outperform these other two. And for the Instruct model, it is fairly close to the current version of GPT-4 Turbo and Claude 3 on MMLU and GPQA, just in need of some boost on the coding aspect like human eval and some mathematical skills. But it's very impressive how this is getting to the GPT-4 territory, and you will get even more impressed by the end of this video. They said that this model is still under training, and this is just an early preview of what is yet to come. Zuck himself even promised that this will be open sourced, and I'll get to this later. But of course, the most exciting part of this Llama 3 announcement is not about this unattainable and unrunnable models for us VRAM pores. The highlight is definitely these two bad boys, Llama 3 AB and 70B. Unlike the few previous Llama series, they decided to ditch the 7 billion model parameters and went for a billion instead. Meta did not specify why they did this, so my guess is that it's probably a design choice, but we might be able to learn more about it once the Llama 3 paper is out. Anyways, this AB model is the current most capable model in the world for its size class, and it's open sourced. How lucky are we? It outperforms its 7B rivals by a huge margin and even kicking asses with models five times its size. Like Mixtro AX7B is sweating bullets right there. Its instruct version also beat GPT 3.5 Turbo, Mistral Next, and all the discontinued versions of Gemini Pro in the chatbot arena leaderboard, which is pretty crazy for an 8B model to do. But for the Llama 3's 80B instruct model, this bad boy might have just demolished everything below GPT 4 level. With performance better than the first version of GPT 4, Claw 3 Haiku, Mistral Large, and Mistral AX 22B, and 10 times cheaper than Claw 3 on it. Wait, wait, wait. And that is just the general benchmark? For the English only benchmark, oh god. It has beaten Bard, Claude 3 Opus, and even the AP version is better than the worst version of GPT-4. And if we count the rumored GPT-4 size being AX220B, then it has been technically beaten by a model that is 200 times smaller, compared to the worst GPT-4 version of course. However, instead of startups being wiped out because of this, we probably are going to see a new wave of super capable models spawning left and right. All starting with the name of Llama 3 blah blah blah, thanks the new Llama 3 TOS where everything fine-tuned on it needs to have Llama 3 in the first hand. So how did the dripped out Zuck do this? How is he so good? yet so bad. The beard is photoshopped by the way. And how they have done this is actually not doing anything new at all. No MOE or any revolutionary architecture, just raw dense decoder only transformer all the way. Llama 3 series retained mostly the same structure that Llama 2 has, only doubling its context length two times from Llama 2, which is quite small compared to the recent model standards, which is 32k for Mixtro and 128k for GPT-4. Llama 3 does use a new tokenizer with a vocabulary vocabulary size of 128k tokens, which is four times more compared to Llama 2. So it can encode many more types of text and even longer words, which means you can compress longer sequences and in this case resulting in a reduction of 15% fewer tokens compared to Llama 2 when encoding the same text. Group query a 
attention has also been applied to the AB model as well, which means attention would be a bit cheaper and it could perform pretty well if the context window is much longer. Someone on 4chan actually extended Llama 3's context window to 32k using rope, and the result they got on the needle in a haystack benchmark looks pretty promising. And aside from this benefit, the parameter scheme for keys and values in GQA usually would increase speed, so while AB is 1B more than 7B, thanks to GQA and the new tokenizer, the efficiency of Llama 3 AB is on par with Llama 2 7B. But these are actually not the main reason why Llama 3 models are this good. What Meta has actually proved to the world this time is that training past the Chinchilla Optimal is well worth it. You see, Llama 2 7B was only trained on 2 trillion tokens worth of data, but Llama 3 8B was trained on a staggering 15 trillion tokens data set. Well beyond the optimal training tokens, more specifically, it is 75 times beyond the optimal for an 8B model, which is a very odd thing to do. But I guess with the performance they got, this is probably not odd anymore. This kind of busted the myth that smaller models cannot learn beyond a certain amount of knowledge. It also potentially implies that most LLMs right now might actually be undertrained. Some people still say that it is a waste of GPU resources to train that much data on a small model. To put the numbers into perspective, while Meta do have their own data centers, 8B still use around 1.3 million H100 hours on training, which is still worth like $2.6 million market price. But on their newest H100 cluster, that will probably only take them a maximum of three days to train. In a recent interview Zuck had with Dorkish Patel that was released the same day as Llama 3, a really good interview by the way, I highly recommend it, Zuck said that the only reason they stopped training the 70B model was that they had the dilemma of do we want to spend our GPUs on training the 70B model further or should we start training what's next? Because apparently their 70B model did not stop learning at all, even after training for a long time. And their models were able to keep on improving and learning is thanks to the high quality data they have, especially for their instruction fine tuning data set. With a combination of SFT, PPO, DPO, and rejection sampling, which is a method of using a reward model to pick the best sample out of a range of samples, gave the model great reasoning capabilities in cases even when it doesn't know the answer. And the highlight in the training data set is definitely it having over 10 million human annotated examples. That number is probably the second reason why R&D for Llama 3 is sky high. They did not use any Meta's user data and the 15 trillion tokens are completely composed of publicly available sources. 5% of the data are non-English tokens spanning over 30 languages. Maybe that's the reason why they all excel in the English benchmark, but it still understands other languages which is pretty neat. So now, here's the big question. Is open sourcing something this expensive? to make worth it. I think we all know that the current open source landscape is pretty rough. Take Stability AI for example. The startup had billions at the start with goals oriented in publishing open source models. Now it is doing really bad and their CEO Emad had to resign. I'm not here to really discuss what they could have done. So what I want to say is open sourcing is great and all but it just kind of doesn't make sense from a business perspective especially when an expensive amount of R&D is involved. In the interview Zuck said that the Llama 3 400B model Model might also get open source too, and the R&D for this is sitting at $10 billion, but it's just not for the cloud. His way of thinking is pretty interesting. Take a look. We have a long history of open sourcing software. Probably the biggest one in our history was Open Compute Project, where we took the designs for our servers and network switches and data centers and made it open source and ended up being super helpful because now like the industry standardized on our design, which meant that the supply chains basically all got built out around our design and the volumes went up. So it got cheaper for everyone and saved us billions of dollars. If people figure out how to run the models more cheaply, well, we're going to be spending tens or like $100 billion or more over time on all this stuff. So if we can do that 10% more effectively, we're saving billions or tens of billions of dollars. Okay, that's probably worth a lot by itself. So other than getting the bragging rights for being able to say some mighty philosophical statement like open sourcing is better, so no one company holds the absolute power, as long as the model itself doesn't become the product, which is what the majority of the businesses that are operating in the AI sector are about, they will keep open sourcing their models. 
And we already saw a great example where building an ecosystem always wins, which is the reason why Nvidia is doing so well right now. But on a side note, Nvidia is even able to optimize Llama 370B and generate at 3000 tokens per second on a single H200, which is nuts. And if you want to quickly try out Llama 3 right now, you can go to ai.nvidia.com and they provide free inferences for you to try out a specific model. Zuck himself also announced the grand plan of integrating Llama 3 into Meta and also announced Meta.ai, a platform just like Gemini and ChatGPT where it has web browsing that access both Google and Bing and can generate images using their EMU models. I don't really know which model this service is running on, but it is free and it might potentially be a testing ground for them in the future where they deploy Llama 3 400B or multi-modalities, which they are still cooking in their research lab. So OpenAI, what's your move? Seeing how Sam Altman was promising to steamroll all competitions a few weeks back, this definitely did not age well. Llama 370B has come pretty close to beating the latest GPT-4, but the real concern for OpenAI is how it is open sourced and the entire world has their hands on it to have the chance to beat OpenAI now. But anyways, if you want to practice some real world coding problems in the style of lead code and also earn some money in the meantime, I think today's sponsor offers you a great opportunity to do that. Ship by Data Curve is a coding platform where you can tackle a wide range of challenging problems in the style of lead code and earn rewards and money if you can code some good solutions to those problems. This is one of the latest initiatives from the company DataCurve.ai, which is behind this project. They aim to address the current shortage in the coding dataset landscape that prevents AI models from really excelling and being helpful to developers. I mean, if you have used any AI other than GPT-4, you would realize how garbage most of them are at writing good quality codes and debugging is a completely different story. Ideally, models should be up to date on frameworks, be better at debugging and solving questions, right? So this is a great win-win situation where you can practice and test your software engineering knowledge and win some cash at the same time. However, due to how popular Shipt is, there is a resume screen and a quick OA process if you decide to join. The current sign-up line is getting into the thousands too, so you better move quickly and sign up now using the link down in the description. And if you're a researcher interested in some high quality coding data set, you should definitely check out datacurve.ai. They are the pioneers behind these initiatives leading the way in data set curation in this data scarce landscape for large language models. Feel free to check them out using the link down in the description. Thank you datacurve.ai for sponsoring this video. Thanks so much for watching. Just a quick live update about me. Feel free to click off if you want, but thanks for sticking around if you are. And yeah, I actually just finished university and I am debating to go full time making YouTube videos because I really do enjoy making them. And it has always been my dream of making YouTube videos ever since I was a kid. So you are probably going to see me upload more often, hopefully. And while I am a, while I was a CS student focused in machine learning, there are still a lot of things I need to learn, especially with how hard the field of AI really is. I know I could just always do AI news exclusively since that has more of an audience and doesn't require that much in-depth knowledge. Well, I did technically try that last year, but I still feel like I had more fun sharing with people what I learned from research. And it's just much more enjoyable and exciting than telling people some company A added some feature or some company B raised how much money. So anyways, what I really wanted to say is I am probably going to make a lot of mistakes and the technical details going down the line. I hope you can bear with me and kindly correct me when I'm wrong. And I also hope I can continue to have your support, whatever it's just liking and leaving nice comments or chipping in on my Patreon for helping out with my living expenses and paying for editors to speed up my video editing process. <laughs> Sorry if that was a lot to ask or especially financially. And if you do choose to support, just imagine you becoming like my boss man and maybe you can get to watch some semi-in-depth AI research video in return. <laughs> and I'll be very, 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 very grateful. And yeah, um, oh, I am also looking for some like-minded people that are down to work together for video scripting or maybe reviving the AI newsletter with me. <laughs> Please don't be overqualified or else I can't pay you reasonably. Feel free to hit me up on Discord though if you're interested. So yeah, a big, big shout out to my current boss man, Andrew Chilius, one of my earliest and the biggest supporter, Chris Ledoux, who has been supporting me for a long time and sponsored a huge event that I had, and Alex J, Deegan, Alex Maurice, Mick Willem, Fefal, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see y'all in the next one.